This is question 5, 2011 Higher Paper 2. It's about logs. So before we start the question, let's revise a little bit about logs. And uh, logs seem to be a particular problem. Let's take something that's very understandable. 8 equals 2 cubed. Now, thinking involved here uh, would be to say that 3 is the log. The log is equal to 3. This, this think of the power as the log. So what power do you raise 2 to to get 8? And the answer is 3. What power do you raise 2 to to get 8? And the answer is 3. That way of thinking allows you to look at, for instance, what power do you raise 10 to to get 100? The answer would be 2. What power do you raise 3 to to get root 3, for instance? Well, root 3 is 3 to the half. So what power do you raise 3 to to get root 3? answer is 1 half. What power uh, do you raise 9 to to get 1? answer 0. 9 to the power 0 is 1. And what power do you raise b to to get c? Answer a. We can write that in the way what power do you raise b to and the answer is a to get c. So b to the power a is equal to c. Now this, this equivalence, being able to change from a log statement to a power statement Absolutely vital that you practice that. But use a, a known fact. Use something like 10 squared equals 100. And read it as what power do you raise 10 to to get 100? Answer 2. What power? The power is the log. What power do you raise 10 to to get 100? The answer is 2. So there's a, a way of thinking that seems to help people that find this aspect difficult. So that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is, is to do with the rules that say if, you, if you're adding two logs together, then you must have been multiplying the numbers in the first place. So that the, the log of A plus the log of B is equal to the log of a, b. For instance, 2 cubed times 2 to the 4 is 2 to the 7. Uh, the log of this number is 3. The log of this number is 4. And when you multiply these two together, the log of this number is the sum of these two logs. So you must have been multiplying the numbers together if you have added the logs together. So there's a rule, and, and also the other one that says log A minus log B. Uh, if you're subtracting logs, then you must have been dividing the numbers in the first place. So log A minus log B is equal to log A divided by B. And the last one that I want to remind you of log of a to some power this power moves down to the front n lots of log a you, you can see it for instance in a, in a case where the log of 2 cubed what you're doing there is saying that it's log 2 times 2 times 2 that you're multiplying these three twos together so you must have been ag ad adding the logs together you get a log 2 plus a log 2 plus a log 2 which is three lots of a log 2 so where you started off with a log of uh, multiplying three numbers together you've ended up with adding the three separate logs together but in effect this number here the power has slipped down to the front and is now multiplying the log. So log of a to the power n is n times log a. So that's um, a little revision of some of the basics of logs. A bit rushed, but let's tackle the question now. And there's various methods of doing this question. Um, here's one of them. This setup where you've got 
at two axes and a straight line with, uh, you know, the, the intercept here is 5, you know, another point is, is 4, 7. Now, normally what happens here is that you would have, for instance, an X here and a Y here, which is not what we've got up here. We have a log to the base 2 of X and a log to the base 2 of y. So that's the difference between these two situations. But certainly in this situation, if you wanted to find the equation of this line, you know the y-axis intercept, and you can work out the gradient. Once you know these two things, uh, you can use y equals um, x plus c. So c would be the, the y-axis intercept, and m is the gradient of this line. Now, we can certainly work out the gradient of this line. It's the y between these two points. It's the y difference. Uh, of course, this is the point 0, 5. It's the y difference, the difference between the two y coordinates. Watch the order. You start with this, finish with this. So 7 minus 5. That's the difference of the two y coordinates divided by the x difference. That's 4. Remember we started with this point. We must start with this for the x difference. 4 minus 0. So there's 4 minus 0. So 7 minus 5 is 2. 4 minus 0 is 4. We get a gradient of a half. And that's a, a gently rising line. Yeah, you go along one, you've had to go up a half, or along two, you go up one. That looks fine from the diagram. So the gradient is a half, and of course the the y-intercept is five. Uh, so the equation of this line equation is y equals gradient m, which is one half, times x plus, and the intercept is 5. So we've ended up from this situation, good old familiar situation, where you just work out using y equals mx plus c what the equation of that line is. So the difference between this setup and this setup is that everywhere we've got a red y, we have a log to the base 2 of y, black y. And everywhere we have a red x, we've got a black, a log to the base 2 of black x. So there's a substitution to be done now. So we replace y by log to the base 2 of y. And this y is not the same as that y. <laughs> this one's red, this one's black. Anyway, that gets replaced by that. Uh, gradient's one half. Red x gets replaced by log to the base 2 of black x plus 5. And you would get a substantial number of marks for that out of the five marks allocated for this question just to achieve this uh, result. Now, in comes the rules of logs that we talked about just before I started this. First off, a number in front of a log, this can drift up and becomes a power of x. So log to the base 2 of y is equal to log to the base 2 of x to the power of half, plus the 5. Let's take this log to this side. In other words, we subtract log to the base 2 of x to the half from both sides of the equation. So we end up on the left with log to the base 2 of y minus log to the base 2 of x to the half, and that'll just equal 5, since that's disappeared now. And here's a, a log law coming up where we are subtracting two logs. We must have been dividing these two numbers. So the log of the division of these two numbers will be the same as the subtraction of the two logs. So that's your, one of your basic log laws. That equals 5. 
And we're now at the stage where we're saying, remember how I told you to read these things, what power do you raise two to to get this? The answer is five. So you'll get this, y over x to the half, by raising two to the power five. So there's your log statement. Remember, we often you remember this in the case of log to the base b of c equals a or whatever. What power do you raise b to to get c? The answer is a. So c will be b to the power a. So however you remember it, this is what's going on at this stage. There's a log statement changing to the equivalent power statement. Okay, so... Let's multiply both sides by x to the half. y equals 2 to the power 5 times x to the half. Now, 2 to the power 5, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, 32. x to the half. So we've multiplied both sides by x to the half and worked out 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 2 to the power 5. Okay, and let's just compare with what they they, they had. The question uh, up there says y equals k to the power, uh, sorry, k times x to the power n. And you compare this with that, it's very obvious that k is equal to 32 and n is equal to a half. So we've successfully solved the question. So there's one method of doing that question. So one of the wonders of maths is the variety of methods that you can uh, use to solve questions. And certainly this question has a variety of methods that can be used to solve it. So here is another method. Um, in a situation like this, where we've not got an x-axis and a y-axis, we have a log to the base 2 of x-axis and a log to the base 2 of y-axis. We can't say for uh, the point zero 0.05 that x equals 0 and y equals, and y equals 5 like we normally do. So what we can say is that instead of for x equals 0, log to the base 2 of x is equal to 0. So log to the base 2 of x equals 0, and not y equals 5, but log to the base 2 of y equals 5. So a couple of log statements here, and if we read them correctly, what power do you raise 2 to, to get x? Answer 0. So x will be got by raising 2 to the power 0, which is 1. What power do you raise 2 to to get y? The answer is 5. So you'll get y by raising 2 to the power 5, which is 32. So when x equals 1, y equals 32. That's what we can get from that point. Let's do a similar analysis for the point 4, 7. So instead of saying when x is 4, y is 7, we'll say when log to the base 2 of x equals 4, then log to the base 2 of y is equal to 7. What power do you raise 2 to to get x? Answers 4. So x is 2 to the power 4. It's 2, 4, 8, 16. And y, in that case, what power do you raise 2 to to get y? The answer is 7. Uh, y will be 2 to the power 7. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, so there's facts. When x is 1, y is 32. When x is 16, y is 128. 
Now let's look at the information we're given. We know that the variables x and y, x and y, there they are, are related according to the equation y equals kx to the power n. So using 0, 5, we'll get y, which is 32, is equal to k times 1 to the power n. 1 to the power n is 1. No matter how many 1's you multiply together, you'll still get uh, uh, 1. So 1 to the power n is 32. Sorry, 1 to the power n is 1. 1 times k is 32. So k is 32. So we've moved on slightly. We know this k is 32. We should use it. So we know this. And using the second point, 4, 7, and uh, substituting for x and y, for this point we know that y is 128 and x is 16. So we've got 128 is 32 times 16 to the power n. A slightly tougher equation, this one, but let's uh, divide both sides by 32. Uh, 4 lots of 32 is 128, so 32 into this goes 4 times, and when you divide the right hand side by 32, this, this becomes 1 in effect. So we've got 4 as 16 to the power n. Now, 4 is the square root of 16. Square roots are powers a half, so we could write down straight away that n equals a half. 16 to the power a half is a 4. So again, we've produced our two values for k and n. Lovely solution. So that's not the whole story. Here's another slightly different method of solving the equation. It starts solving the question and it starts with their information, the information that they've given us that the variables x and y are related according to this equation. And to introduce log to the base 2 into this equation, let's take the log of both sides log to the base 2 of both sides. So we would have log to the base 2 of the y is equal to log to the base 2 of kx to the power n. Now laws of logs allow us on the right hand side to say look we're, we're multiplying two numbers together. Uh, you're thinking here would be to say look this is this is like your case of log a times b which gives me log a plus log b. So let's separate, there's k times x to the power n. So that would be the sum of log of k and the log of x to the power n. And you just can't stop yourself now, the laws of log are, are, are pouring out your brain. There's one that would immediately say to you that, gosh, that power can come drifting down to the front. And there we go. Now, it, it's looking, well, if you have experience of it, it's looking very much like an equation of a straight line. It might not appear to be like that to you, but let's just put in brackets, let, let, let's compare y equals mx plus c. And there's your y, big y axis, there's your big x axis. So on this graph, straight line graph, m is the gradient. That's the gradient. And then the y-intercept 5 
is this. So um, the gradient is equal to, and then we'll do the trick that we did in one of the previous solutions, the y difference, 7 minus 5 over the x difference, 4 minus 0. That's 2 over 4, that's 1 half. So we've ended up finding what n is. Uh, also, C, maybe put down the gradient there so that that's known. Uh, and this is the y-intercept. This is equal to 5. And we'll put down uh, the big y-intercept. So here's a, a basic log statement. What power do you raise 2 to to get k? The answer's 5. So k is got by raising 2 to the power 5. 2 to the power 5 is 32. We're done. There's our value of k, and there's our value of n.